Now, if you do a lot of short session fishing like I have done this year, then I want to show you a little stick mix that I've been using. It incorporates some of the mainline stick mixes and bag mixes that they do. They're renowned for brilliant boilies, but they also put some of that expertise into some, making some great little stick mixes. So this one, firstly, you need to get some of the new pellet combo that they do. All different pellets, all different sizes, all different breakdowns. I put a nice couple of handfuls into the bottom of a tub. Then I get one of my favourite stick mixes, that's the activated hemp mix. Again, a nice handful's worth into there. And now one of the other stick mixes they do comes in the bag form, that's the tiger nut one. Again, a nice handful in there. And then the final part and the component that I like to put in is actually to crush some pop-ups. I get some old pop-ups that I've had knocking around in the rucksack for a while, put them in the crusher, mill them up until they're a fine dust, and then pour them in there and stir them in nicely until everything's spread nice and evenly. And that's the the little yellow bits that you can see in here. And then the final component that goes in is actually one of the pellet and particle syrups that they do. That's the new Grange. That matches the boilies that I often use on short day sessions. I like to always catapult a few around the bags that I use, so that's a nice compliment. I put that in, not too much. Don't make it too wet to start with. Put a few, you know, a small amount in and just get it nicely stirred in. So you get a nice little damp ball that you can join together, but it, it doesn't want to be wet because what will happen is it will slowly dry off a little bit and you'll have a nice break down that's that's the sort of consistency I like like that I don't want it to be congealed in a ball once it's in the bag I want it to break down so that those little particles of pop up start fizzing away along with that activated hemp mix if you're looking for a bag mix that's going to hone carp into it that's definitely something you should be using and then quite simply I put it into the original funnel web system again one that I like to use and rather than thread the stick down because the anti-tangle sleeves become a, a bit of a signature of my rigs now following the underwater filming I like to just hook them on that's for two reasons because I haven't got a quick release system that incorporates the anti-tangle sleeve but also because I don't like the knot or anything to be being around the hook end so quite simply just hooking it through like that and one final point you'll notice, because you're hooking it through, it doesn't actually sandwich the hair against the hook. So what I like to do is get some of the quick melt PVA tape that we do and just do a little granny knot and just sandwich that hair. That stops the hook bait from wrapping around the hook during the cast or when it uh, first lands on the bottom and it's ready to snarl them carp. And just before you cast out, I like to add some of that syrup. I think there's nothing wrong with adding some of these PVA friendly liquids before you cast and literally that's it, ready to go. Get it out there. If you're doing short sessions, a little stick mix like this is definitely gonna put more fish on the bank. This is the Daiwa Infinity Sleep Easy Bed Chair, new for 2013, got quite a few new features on it as well. First of all, the sides of it have really been beefed up, you can see how thick the padding is there, so you're going to get a better night's sleep on it for that reason. And also the centre bit, you can tear it away if you want to wash it or not fish with it, I can't understand why you wouldn't want to use it, because look how thick it is. That's going to be really comfortable to sleep on. And you can see the whole configuration of the bed chair now is much flatter. A lot of bed chairs in the past used to curve up at the end, you put a pillow on them and you're too high up. Perfectly flat like a bed, so you're going to get a better night's kip as well. Looks like a big bed chair, three legs as well, so it's very stable. But check out the weight, that is super, super light because it's made of aluminium. And then on the bottom of the legs as well, if we just look at the front there, we've got nice feet that are on a ball joint, so they'll rest into any part of the ground that you're putting them on. Again, it helps the bed chair get flatter and makes it more stable as well. So very well made, like all the Daiwa stuff. That's the bed chair, let's look at the chairs. These are the updated chairs from Daiwa. First of all, the Infinity Specialist chair. It's got a little tray on the side there for your little boxes of maggots, something to put your bottle of water in and what have you. And if you're sitting on a chair for a long time, armrests make a massive difference to how comfortable it is. And if you just want to chill and just wait for the bite to come, you've got a nice headrest as well there. And like all the Daiwa chairs, it's very tight on there. It doesn't sag in the middle and that makes it more comfortable. So that's the specialist one. And then the next one in the Infinity range, this is grand luxury if you're doing day sessions as a carp angler. It's not quite a bed chair, so it's got a foot bit at the end there and it does recline so it goes completely flat. So if you get up early in the morning, then you want to have a bit of kit 
it during the daytime. You can put it out like a bed and kip on it, but it's not long enough to actually do long sessions on. Like all the chairs in the range, made from aluminium, so it weighs absolutely nothing. It's got the great big feet on it as well, and the legs lock into position so it can't collapse when you're sitting on it. So if I was just doing day sessions, this would absolutely be the one I would use. And then moving over to the Mission Low Chair, all the others are light. This is just ridiculous, like a feather, this one, because it's all aluminium. It's tube all the way through. And these armrests here really make a difference, not for just when you're sitting on it, but pushing yourself out of it to get to the rods, because it is quite low. That really does help. Top quality material, so it's going to last a long time. And like all the chairs, extremely well made, and it suits any kind of fishing. These are new to the mainline range. This is the Cell one, and this is the Clockwork Orange. The Cell needs absolutely no introduction, and the Clockwork Orange, if you're looking for a little fruity liquid to add to stick mixes or fresh to the outside of a PVA bag, then that's definitely one worth a try. Now, moving on to some of the ground baits in the range. The Cloud 9 is one I've been using loads and loads over this year. This goes straight into my spot to when I'm spotting over zigs to create that cloud. And this is the Tiger Nut one, a real favourite of mine again. One to put into spod mixes if you're spotting over zigs, that'll really give it a big old cloud. That's the tiger nut meal inside it that helps add that effect. And also if you want to just add it neat to a spod mix when you're fishing on the bottom, it'll aid that also. And finally, the particle and pellet syrups. If you want to give your pellets an extra glaze, some extra attraction, then they're definitely the ones to use. And also to put into your spod mix. If you want to give that spod mix an extra taste, some extra edge, then they're also brilliant for that. So if you want to get a quicker bite and boost the attraction in your swim, these are brilliant for the job. Mr. Del Romang of Delkin fame has been really busy in the last 12 months working on a very, very clever line clip design called the Smart Clip, and it's an absolute godsend for me because my Infinity DFs, I absolutely love them, but they don't have a line clip. So great timing because I do like using them. So let me talk you through the actual product and how it works. The first thing is how you put it on to the actual rod blank because they are compatible with any rod out there on the market. First thing you do, take the clip out, hold it against the rod, and it actually comes with like a giant washer, giant rubber washer. So take the loop around and pull it through the two steel ball bearings that are spring loaded inside of the clip and then take it over the other side and pull them both in. Uh, it's a nice bit of tension but don't be alarmed it doesn't mark the blank or damage those lovely rods that you spent loads of money on. Now onto how it actually works because there's loads of different ways of using it. If you like to have a line clip that just comes out once you can do that. You can quite simply just pull it into the two little ball bearings in there. Alternatively, this is what I really like, there's multiple configurations. You can actually take it once through the front clip and then into the ball bearings. That gives you double tension. So as a fish takes, it pulls down on that tip really aggressively. And even before you've got to the rod, it's almost like it's struck for you because it's got that test curve of the rod into the game. Or you can go twice, you can go through the clip, through the ball bearings, and then through the back clip as well. Double whammy extra tension and I tell you what that is going to give you better hook holds. Talking about the actual bite indication part of it, you can actually move the clip towards the alarm. Now if you do that, that actually reduces the weight of the bobbin. So if you're fishing slack lines but you still want to capitalise on your duo carbs and your Nightlight Pro, by having the line clip at the front you can actually reduce the weight of the bobbin or if you're fishing at range and you want a heavier bobbin, have the line clip like this one, about a foot from the buzzer and then that's going to give added weight. So if I pull that up, you're going to maximise the weight of it. Where these ones, you'll notice because they're closer, it's very subtle. But I've got absolute slack line going out there. The lines are drooping from there, but I'm still able to have my swinger nice and sensitive. So a brilliant little addition. Now, talking of the Nightlight Pros and the Duo Carbs, they've been very popular. So Delkim have now reduced the length of them for those tackle tarts out there. So you've got a shortened Duo Carb, that's so easy to do. You just clip it onto this wonderful little addition on the front there. It just clips on nicely. It's important to have the head of the bobbin facing outwards. So the, the part that lights up facing out towards the lake. And then when you push that in the jack socket, it'll make sure every time it comes up, it doesn't twist and everything's streamlined and the weight should be facing. On the Nightlight Pro, it's worth pointing out that you don't actually need a battery for this. It utilises everything out of the TXI body. So it imitates 
everything that that buzzer does. So if you get a bleep on that, you'll get that illuminating. Both LEDs will mimic each other. If you want to have it on a nightlight setting, and so it imitates an isotope, if you like, you can also do that. It will show up perfectly. I really, really like the nightlights. It's clever, and if you're a bit of a tackle tart, it's a lovely feature. And onto the duo carbs again, you'll notice it's really windy here, and there's absolutely no movement on that. And that was what they were designed for, to allow you to have a nice, lightweight bobbin that was stable in high winds, and if you like the swinger effect, you've got the best of both worlds. Now, moving on to the snag ears. Again, a wonderful feature, beautifully engineered. And that's what I like as a trademark of all of these Delkim items. They're really well thought about and well put together. And before we go, I'm just going to show you exactly how this lion clip works. Here we go. Everyone likes to see a tape. Listen to that double click. With all of these new additions, it really is the complete bite indication system. The first time I saw these Daiwa rucksacks was actually when we filmed this DVD last year. This one looked perfect for me because I was trying to scale everything down to take less tackle and it is amazing how much fits in this little tiny rucksack. The top bit there for me is perfect because I put all my bank sticks and everything in there, my buzzers and all that sort of stuff goes in there. Got my glasses and stuff in there as well. So that it opens up first at the start of the session. Bank sticks go in the ground and everything else. And then that just gets zipped up and out the way. And then the other pockets on the outside. At the front here, I keep marker floats in there. I've got my catapult, spare spods, all that sort of stuff in the front. And then on the sides, I've got another little bag that goes inside that one. So I've just got little tools and bits and pieces in there. Car keys and stuff go in there as well. And then on the other side, I take a massive great battery with me to recharge my phone three or four times during the session because I'm always emailing and on the phone to the boys at work. And then to show you inside, if I just slip this open here. So, got your fishing towel rig box in there, tackle box as well, rig wallet, got another little bits bag as well and then at the bottom I've got another bits bag with all bits of spare hook link and that sort of stuff in there and then another bits bag which is my leads one as well in there so so much gear goes into that and for me it just packs in perfectly so I can get everything that I need to take with me into that like so it means I don't take too much tackle with me and the best thing about this rucksack is how it feels on your back because everything's compact and it sits high up on your back the way it's been designed it just fits into the curve of your back so well I do loads of walking when I'm fishing welly it might be three quarters of a mile round to the swim so I put this on my back the rest of the gear goes on my cart porter and I'm round the lake so that's the one that I use you'd have to take a lot of kit with you to use this one let's show you the straps on the back of the larger version it's all really well padded in there and it just fits your back so well it's really comfortable to wear but in there you would get absolutely loads of kit twice as much as i'd need to take with me but if you take a mountain of gear that's the one i'd recommend both extremely well made and well thought out as well these air dry bags are by Daiwa, these are the Infinity ones, are wicked. They've got loads of structure to them because they're like a mesh coated in plastic. So they'll stand up on their own with nothing in them. Really good when you're pouring boilies into them, they don't end up going everywhere. And they will sit like that on the floor and get a lot of air going through the boilies. Now, you wouldn't believe it, but this one takes nine kilos of boilies. This is the larger one of the two. And then the smaller one takes five kilos. And that's only that big. It's amazing how it disappears into there. And a few tips, if you're drying your baits out, we're here for a week session at Gigantica, we're lucky, we can keep stuff in the freezer here, but if we couldn't, then I'd wanna dry the baits out. So what you would do, spread them out on your unhooking mat if you can, as soon as they come out of the freezer bag, not in the sun, but spread them out so they just dry out, then transfer them into one of these things and keep them moving around. That's really, really important, because what happens is moisture collects between the boilies and then they start to go off from the middle of the bag outwards. If you can hang them up in a tree in the wind, that's even better, that takes the moisture out of them. But if it's gonna rain, put them back in your bivy or put them in a bucket, and as soon as it stops raining, get them back out again and get the air to them, because baits like this mainline stuff will go off that's the reason it's so good, because it's breaking down all the time. If you leave it in somewhere that's damp and a bit warm, it's going to go off really quickly. So air dry bags will save your bait. 
And then one other use for them that I worked out earlier on this season, anything that's going to get wet during a session, like these waders, rather than storing them in a normal bag, which will seal the moisture inside, if you put them inside one of these air dry bags, you can hang them up at the back of the bivvy or whatever, and they will start to dry out during the session. Chuck them back in your car, they will also start to dry out. So it stops things like that getting mouldy. A really good use for something, you know, that's only designed really for putting boilies in. Also keep a couple of these in the van just as overflow bags. So if I've got to take extra bait or hook baits or whatever with me, these actually show you what's inside it so you can stick it at the back of the bivvy and you know exactly what's there. So good little product for storing boilies, but loads of other uses as well. Well, there you go, a beautiful Gigantica common carp, 30 pounds, eight ounces, and this was taken on a rig that's been inspired by the underwater filming. So I'm gonna show you that right now. Right, this is the rig that I'm using at Gigantica this week, but it's also a rig that I've been using quite successfully in the UK. It's been truly inspired by the filming that we've done at St John's on the underwater part seven. Uh, very similar to a rig that Dan was using that helped him snare that wonderful big plated. So I'd be a fool if I didn't take some of that footage into my own fishing and apply it like I have done. The rig is very simple to tie. First thing that you do is take some of the IQ2 fluorocarbon. I take off about 12 inches of that, cut it off, then take a curved shank hook. This is a size four, but on Thinking Tackle you saw when I was with Towie Star Mick Norcross, we were using a size six on Bird's Green. So it doesn't matter, you can pick and choose what size hook you have. So the size four is then knotless knotted to the IQ, and then you actually cut off the tag end. In this instance, you don't have a follow through of filament to make a hair, simply cut off the tag end. The next part, you take a micro swivel and just simply thread that onto the shank of the hook, followed by a hook bead. And you'll notice there, it just positions everything nicely. Next up, take some of the new bait floss that we do and thread that through the other eye of the swivel that's on the shank there and just quite simply thread that boilie down that floss, making sure both parts have been sort of caught in the latch of the boilie needle and push it through. And then the final job that you've got to do is just basically with a few granny knots, lodge a boilie stop in position and then just blob the end with a lighter. Now, up to the other end because this is really important. I've incorporated an anti-tangle sleeve, not just because it eliminates tangles, but because it's so good at helping the rig reset itself on the bottom. On the underwater filming, we saw time and time again, not only on seven, but also on eight that's gonna come out in 2013, fish getting away with it, picking it up. And if that rig doesn't reset itself and you're using a big long braided hook link, there's every chance that bait's just gonna get snarled up around the lead or even around the leader, and it's not fishing for you. This rig is brilliant at just punching back out there again and fighting the good fight and ensuring the next time a carp comes up to it it's sitting cocked and ready and Dan mentioned to me if they use that at Lahore that just that little addition of an anti-tangle sleeve on the other part of this DVD then they believe they would have caught more fish and eliminated more tangles it's such a little component but it makes so much difference to your fishing and that complements a very streamlined setup here I've just threaded on about 12 inches of dark matter rig tube, sinks like a brick, it's a joy to thread, all you've got to do is make sure there's a little angle cut at the end of the line when you thread it through and it'll just run through there with ease. Add a little tail rubber that pushes beautifully 
into the tail rubber at the other end. The Palomar knot that's joined to the hybrid leg clip and the whole lot sits lovely and streamlined. And like I've already said, it will just keep kicking back out and fishing beautifully. It's a very aggressive working rig. Every time I pull it along the palm of my hand and we saw that when the big plate had come up and sucked that boil in, it was nabbed instantly. And that's down to that sort of intern of the curve shank hook coupled with that stiffer IQ filament. It all just aids itself in really grabbing fish nice and quickly. And it also helped him catch a lot more beautiful carp from St. John's. Ultimately, it's a really good rig when you're fishing for tricky carp. It's going to keep resetting itself. And I promise you, if you incorporate this into your fishing, you're going to bag plenty in the coming year. Another new accessory that's great in the Delkin range are these colourful hard cases to match the LEDs on all of their alarm range. I absolutely love them. They're not just for tackle tarts either. They're quite functional because it allows you to recognise exactly which colour alarm you've got under which hard case. So I'm going to take this off. Very easily done. And here's a new towel as well that they've done. So every now and again, a little breath, a little breath on there. Give your Delkins a polish and keep them gleaming. This is the new level light bed from Tracker. It's not going to be called a bed chair because it can't be fished with as a chair. There's no ratchet to it at all. You've got one of these unique mechanisms here at either end and that allows it to unclip and fold out perfectly flat in an instant. So it's really quick to set up. You've got a really wide sleeping area. That's really important. Thick foam on it and then the thermal covering makes it really, really comfortable. And then on the outside, you've got a thick foam padded area around the side but in a really robust material so that's not going to wear out. I've worked with Tracker on this one personally and what we were trying to achieve was a chair that wasn't curved up at the end so that when you fished on a bank that had a slope on it normally with a normal bed chair your head ends up too high you don't get a good night's kip with this one you can get it perfectly flat and I've done a few nights on it now and they are the most comfortable night's sleep I've ever had on a fishing bed. New mechanism on the legs as well, Tracker have come up with that one, a little button that you press and the leg just drops down so if the ground's uneven you can just press the leg and it just finds its level straight away, that's a really good addition to it. And the other thing about that mechanism is when you fold it up it's designed to be folded up with a sleeping bag inside it. I never put a sleeping bag back inside the bag you buy it in, I always keep it on the bed chair and I've actually broke a few frames where I've been trying to fold the bed chair up with too thick a sleeping bag inside it. Now I use a 365 sleeping bag with the inner in it in the winter and that will go on top of there and fold up perfectly inside it without compressing it too much and it goes into a nice compact shape and that's really important as well. If you're putting this back into your motor, a lot of the other big bed chairs that are out at the moment have got bits sticking out at all angles and they're difficult to load back into your car. This one's really compact, there's no bits jutting out and it just slots in perfectly. The other major advantage about this bed is it's much lighter. Just not having the ratchet on there reduces the weight considerably. There's as much aluminium on it as possible and it can be probably 30% lighter than a lot of the other bed chairs in its class. So extremely well made, the best night's sleep I've ever had on the bank. This is the bed chair I'm using next season. Something that's often overlooked and underestimated is the importance of good rig tools in your tackle box. Now when we launched these quite a few years ago we wanted to produce something that was long lasting and also colour coded so you could easily recognise which one was which. So I'm going to take you through the range. Now you can see this one's had plenty of use. The old handle's got loads of bait debris in it. This is called the stringer needle. It's red coded, it's got a nice latch on the end so if you're threading on long sticks or stringers then that's the one you want to use really hardy, it's not going to bend and snap, so you can push that through nice firm boilies or sticks and that will slide them nicely onto the rig. Next one, this one's the orange one. Now one of the things I used to hate when I spliced lead core was the little flimsy needle that often came complete with the lead core. This one totally solves that, still fine but very durable and you won't have that problem of that little nib breaking off every time you use it. So for splicing lead core, it's the orange one you want. Now, this one's called the fine needle. It's the purple head. 
Now this one's good for when you're using really small baits or and you don't want to sort of make them crack. This one will cut through them excellently. And also, if you want to reuse sinkers or some of the new uh, no trace system beads, then again, this fine latch needle is perfect for that job. Now moving on to the next one, this is the green headed one, this is the heavy latch needle which is quite simply just an all round boily needle with a latch on the end. So whether you're using boilies or some other baits then this is the one to use. Next up is I would say Team Corder's favourite. This is what we call the old war horse, this is the braid needle, it's got a very very sharp tip on the end with a sort of submerged barb there basically. Now I use this for almost every form of bait. It cuts through really tough baits like nuts. Sometimes you can even use the tip of it to push nicely through those firm boilies without cracking them. You can work it through almost like a drill and it'll cut and won't actually split them because it's still got a nice thin diameter to it and also brilliant when you just want to hook some floss into there as you would have seen plenty of times on the rig that I use incorporating a micro rig swivel you can just pull the floss in and just thread that bait nicely on there you don't need the latch sometimes I find the heavier latch needles can can bore a larger hole through the bait this is brilliant when you want to thread on pop-ups and you don't want to put too big a hole in them to affect the buoyancy so an excellent needle one to definitely use and the last one in this little selection of rig tools is the puller tool. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It's been a godsend since its release. Put swivels over it or a hook just around there and you can pull it down nice and tight. I like to have two of them so you've got either end of a rig, for example, and you can just tease those knots down. Absolutely brilliant. Haven't stopped using it since we launched it. Couldn't recommend it enough. And then finally, what are they all rested on? This is the rig safe. I've nicked the gaffer's very own one because my one is a bit atrocious to be honest. A couple of rigs rattling around in there. But if you like Danny and you like to have plenty of rigs tied up for different situations, then there is nothing better than the rig safe. I remember doubting Mr. Clark when he first designed this quite a few years back in the quarter offices how wrong I was. It has become an absolute mainstay of so many top anglers around the UK and Europe. Brilliant, does exactly what you want it to. Just in here you've got a few little cupboards to put some uh, your little pins and bits and pieces, link loops, quick links, anything you want in there and those pins have even now been developed to just have a little corder glasses fused onto it. Brilliant little tool, just to summarise, brilliant bits of kit that I really couldn't live without. If you're on the lookout for some new rig tools or you haven't got any yet, then these are the ones to use. Up until now, there's always been a stigma attached to ready-made baits that they're far inferior than their freezer ready-made counterparts. Not any longer, because Mainline, back in early 2012, set out on a mission working closely alongside Team Corder to develop what we believe is going to be the ultimate ready-made out there. Not only is it nutritional, but it's going to be highly attractive on any lake, anywhere in Europe or in the UK. So I'm going to take you through the range now and talk you through it, because I'm really excited, because I really do believe these are going to catch so many carp from across the globe. So this one, the first one. Now for all intents and purposes that looks really like a cell boily, but this one has a little twist to it. You may remember last year on volume five of Carp Tackle Tactics and Tips, Dan hauling those big carp out on his homemade Bonoffi hook baits. Well, that exact flavor blend has been incorporated into this ready-made. It's uh, reduced down, so obviously you haven't got the same va va -voom or wow factor of a, of a hook bait. You don't want that in an actual free loose feed boilie. This one combines not only excellent attractors that have been in the mainline range for years, but also some of that brilliant nutritional fish meal baits that they have. It's all in there, locked into one brilliant boilie. And this is what I love about this ready-made range. A lot of the ones you see out there have got like a shine to them. They're almost marble-like, the shelf lifes. Not these. These just crumble in your hand with absolute ease. And that's what makes them digestible, easy to break down, and carp are going to come back time and time again for more in your swim. And that's what you want a boilie that fish are going to come in, enjoy eating, and eat with ease. You know, you don't want a boilie that stodges them up. And some of the ready mades out there are, are cheap, they're put together with the lowest quality ingredients, not these. These are put together with the highest ingredients to combine with brilliant attractors to just work for you on any venue. Next up, are these yellow morsels. Check these out. Now you've heard the word IB, haven't you? We've been using that flavour blend on lakes all across Europe throughout Thinking Tackle for years and we've been catching carp everywhere we've gone. For the very first time, Mainline have managed to incorporate that same blend of flavours 
into a loose feed boilie. That's a real exciting breakthrough. And uh, not only have they got that flavour blend, but they've also got a real exciting powder in there. If you smell them, it's got like a little refresher aroma to it. And that makes sure that bait's going to fight the sort of smells of silt and everything else on the bottom, ensuring that bait's pumping out loads of attraction for time and time and time to come as fish move over your spot. A really, really good bait that's going to catch carp, not only in the summer month, but it's going to be brilliant in the winter, this one, I assure you. And finally, probably my favourite one. This one is a spicy crab, so it's on a real good fish meal, highly nutritional base with some spicy powders in there. You know, you've seen this catch loads of carp. Dan used to put loads of chilli and salt into his particles. Well, we've sort of got that salty, spicy element in this boilie, but with one valuable addition, the monster crab flavour that has been catching carp from across Europe, not only for years, but decades, and that's all inside this boilie. You can be rest assured here, are probably some of the best boilies I've ever got my hands on. Whenever we get a new bait from Mainline, it always seems to produce from the off. On the most recent underwater film at St John's, we had a new bait to try there, and those carp were absolutely devouring it, and these are gonna be no different. To complement the range, there's gonna be dips, there's gonna be pop-ups, and the unusual addition of wafters. And whether you're gallivanting across Europe or you don't want the ag of a freezer bait, finally, there is a shelf life ready-made that can compete against anything out there in the bait world. Everything that you see on this DVD are actual products that Team Cord are using their fishing. They don't use it because we're paid to use it, we use it because we think it's the best for the job. In my hand is another one of those products. It's a new addition to Carp Tackle Tactics and Tip. This is the Carp Porter by Prestige, without a doubt the best carp fishing barrow on the market. And in Danny Fairbrass's very own words, he believes it's the greatest invention that he's ever seen in his time carp fishing. So why? Quite simple really. I remember the days when I used to have to lug all that kit around lakes, traipsing around, sometimes up to a mile, and then fish start showing somewhere else. And you know what? You didn't really want to move because you had that heartache of having to put all that gear back on your shoulders and carry it around, often around a 30, 40 acre lake. The carp porter changed all of that. For the first time, you're able to carry volumes of kit anywhere around the venue. You know, you could take more than you probably wanted to. You could take spares, you could take more bait, and it allowed you to probably be a better angler and more mobile. This is the Mark II Fat Boy. It's award-winning, industry-leading, and scientifically proven to be the easiest to use. Its weight distribution goes all over that tyre nicely, and you really do feel like you're pushing nothing sometimes. On day trips, it couldn't be easier. And even when I've got a whole load of kit for a night session, again, the way it distributes the weight all over the barrow makes it so, so good to use. And let's have a look at some of the features. This is a new addition. On the older one that I've got, this wasn't on there, but this central bar, again, is detachable. But what it does, it gives real stability to the handle. So when you're pushing it, you don't get rocking and you're not putting your arms under too much tension. I used to like the workout from the old one, but this one's probably cured that now. This is one of my favorite features and it's quite simple really. This Velcro bag gives you a lot of options in, in heavy rain and it gives a nice little sanctuary for your bits and pieces. I put a camera bag in here, I put stick mixes in here, I even put odd boilie bags in there and food. And literally I can lock it away and have it back of the swim, nice and safe. And when I'm actually fishing, when, when the rain does start to fill up, you get these bits starting to sag. All I do is give it like that, just sweep the rain away and back it goes fighting hard against the rain again. And this is another one of those additions they have. This is one of the accessories, but I think it's a brilliant idea. This is actually a rain cover. So once your barrow's fully loaded, you can put this over the top and just keep it there. And if you're doing short sessions and you wanna be super mobile, little things like this do make a big difference because you can be tucked under a tree or in your waterproofs, keeping out of the way, and this keeps your uh, tackle dry as well. So really, really important. Let's go into some of the other elements of it. Now, what I like about all of these accessories that they have is it fits barrows, cart porters, new and old. So these can just quite simply Velcro off and they're just strapped in. Here, we've got some porter pals. There's a deluxe version and a more simplified version. The deluxe version can be used to store boilies as well because it's got a nice thermal lining inside it. So if you put freezer baits in there, it'll keep them in great tip-top condition. And have a look at this. These are really good as well because quite simply, when you've got a bag this big that you can just push onto the front, which is obviously an additional extra, 
it all goes on there. You can have all your tackle and items in there and it leaves you the opportunity to put heavier bait buckets over the wheels and everything else. Talking of wheels, let's get on to them. You've got, on this one, I've got a slightly thinner one, but it comes as standard with a slightly wider wheel. That gives you more stability on flat ground. But if you're going through a lot of muddy ground, I spoke to Alan from Carp Porter and he recommended using this thinner puncture proof tire. That allows you to sort of cut through mud and everything else. It's not as stable, but it doesn't half cut through that mud a lot easier. And also on the back ledge, you've got these nice big mud feet, but these can also be taken off and you can put on the sort of smaller back wheels, which raise it and allows you to push the barrow more. You don't have to lift them as high, you can push them along. And again, that gives the whole thing more stability. Onto the U-bar. This is really simple. It gives you not only something to shunt sort of bags and everything against, it is totally detachable, so you can have it on or not. But if you want to keep the rods at different angles over your luggage, so you can either have it up if you want them leaning downwards, and you can have it low if you want them going skywards, depending on if you're going up hills and everything. You don't want the old rod tips smashing into the ground. What I love about all of these accessories on a cart porter is the fact that they're interchangeable with barrows, new and old. So if at a later stage you want to add some of these lovely luggage items to it, you can do so. And I tell you what, talking of new additions, right here is exactly that. Now, some of you might be looking at it and thinking, that's no different. It isn't. It's got a little twist to it. This is still the Mark II Fat Boy with a difference. This has got a power porter kit added to it. So for all intents and purposes, it's a cart porter, Mark II, fat boy with power. And that's what we've got. You can just add this kit on. You can add the tire, which is where all the magic happens. You can see that engine in there. There's a battery pack on the other side that just basically connects all together. You connect it to this long cable here. And I tell you what, it is an absolute dream to use. If money is no object and you want to take your standard barrow, which you might have tweaked and got it to a level, and you want to go the whole nine yards and just create the ultimate transportation system, this truly is it. And all round, the prestige range, I think, is wonderful. It's well engineered. There isn't enough superlatives to describe the carp porter. It really has made carp fishing so much simpler. I don't even want to hazard a guess as how many extra carp it's caught people. And talking of uh, little extras, this horn I added myself. Power on. I'm going to have a little go with my power porter. This is the new Armo from Tracker. For all intents and purposes, it looks like the same bivy as before, but Tracker believe that they've improved it as far as it can be taken now. First of all, the material. Brand new Aquatex, you can see the colours changed, it's a richer green, really, really nice looking, and everybody that's come past have all commented on the colour straight away, and we are tackle tarts, we do like it to look nice. Another thing about the material is it's lighter weight, but even more breathable than it's ever been before, so it cuts down the condensation further still. And the next thing is the poles. They've made them stronger and lighter, and they've coated them in a nice matte finish, so it makes the bivy look even better. And of course, the frame support comes as standard as well. And then the next improvements, they're little tiny touches. The logo has changed. It's gone tone on tone. The, the little eyelets at the bottom there are all anodized in green as well. The pegs are now green. The zips are green. It all matches the color of the bivy, and I have to say it looks really tasty. The rest of the features, the same as the Armo that everyone's come to know and love. So you've got these mozzie panels on the front, you can have them exposed obviously when it's warm, when it's pouring with rain, those they actually zip down and then velcro at the bottom so the full front of the bivy looks nice and neat. And then moving on to the back of the bivy, there's two mozzie panels that are on the old models as well, they make a massive difference to the heat inside the bivy in the summer. Roll them up and the heat just drops. And then moving back onto the front of the bivy, you've got these rod straps here. Tracker of canvas opinion from loads of carp anglers and they like these little touches. Obviously that stops the rod from sliding off the bivy when you're sorting a rig out. Super heavy duty ground sheet as well, that comes as standard. There is an overwrap for it as well which is in the same material. And obviously that brings the bivy out to there so you get a bit more room. But most importantly it makes it warmer and completely stops the condensation. The whole thing packs down into a heavy duty carry bag. There's a one man, which is this one, and a two man version, which is considerably bigger, more luxurious. And I have to say, looking at all the features that Tracker have done, they really have taken a bivy as far as it can be taken.
Welcome to a new season of Thinking Tackle. Now that's what I'm talking about. This 36 pounder is the reason we are here. And she's yours. Well done, lads. Thanks, very nice. Well man. done. Today has been absolute carnage in the swim. He's bent into a surface hook right. up. Oh no, how's your timing? Um, you've got a couple of feeders made up as well. You're yeah. literally just unclipping the one that's yeah. been used. And yeah, then basically all I'm doing on. after after I've caught a fish or after I'm recasting again to keep the bait going in, simple right. little clip, pull it off, the next one ready, clip out. Right, so you've got a little towel rubber which you slide up the line. Yeah, just towel rubber slide straight up the line uh, it's, and then just pull back over the top and you're ready to go again. So it's just nice and quick, you know, keeping that bait going in all the time, that's the secret. And you've got so. two in there, so you normally have two ready made up for, to go. Yeah, just have, um, you know, you've got Got to be quick to beat him today, am I? So, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> you are fishing real, real close to the island. How do mm. you do that? I mean, you're obviously clipped up. Yeah, fishing to a clip. Uh, always like to fish to a clip when I'm fishing to an island. So, a simple little clip on your reel. Yeah. Basically, judge the distance at the start. Um, you had a bomb on at the start rather than yeah, a feeder. Though, didn't always you? have a bomb, similar sort of size to your feeder. Right. So you can get a good, you know, a good average of, of what it's going to be. And then I chuck to the island. Once I've found my length, I take a little bit of line off. So I've got when, when basically when I cast out, I can pull the rod back up yeah. to get a few winds. So if I do get a big fish and it does try to take me to the clip, I've got a little bit of comfort. Yeah. Zone I mean, you're up against an island, so most of the bites are yeah. going to be drop backs anyway. Yeah. Most they? of them are drop backs or left and right. So yeah, it's, it's never really much of a Super. problem. Super. Well, that's ready to go. Let's see the master in action. Cheers, so get back mate. out there, mate. Good luck. Fish coming really, really quickly at the moment. Uh, lots and lots of bites, loads of fish out there. Fight like mad under your feet. Just hope I can get a big enough lead just to get ahead of Ringer because I know he's going to be on my tail this afternoon. Hopefully I'll be able to carry on with this and just continue putting fish in the net. Um, but we have got the backup for the margin later. Should be good, this one's pulling hard. Really, really give a good account for themselves, these fish. Nice common carp, about six pound. Got a ring of right on my tail now, so I need to catch a few more of these. Uh, let's get this one back and uh, hopefully have another one next shot. Well, Adam said you'd bounce back. You have. You've started chucking up to the island on your second line on the bomb. Uh, why do you think the pellet waggler hasn't fished first off? There's just not a lot of fish moving about. It's hot and humid, but the fish seem to just want to be in shallow water and not up in the water. Right. Like I'm still feeding the pellet waggler line with the 11 mil pellets little and often, but there's no sign of any fish topping. Right. Yet you cast it to the island in that shallow water and you can get bites within seconds. Well, you were saying actually you've been having bites almost too quick before the PVA's yeah. almost melted. Talk yeah. us through your rig because it's very, very simple, um, but so effective. Yeah, right. I've got a little mini leg clip yeah. uh, with a snap link swivel in the bottom. The way it works is rather than like the carp leg clips where it's designed to discharge the That's lead, it. these leg clips are designed as like a semi-fixed rig. Yeah, so it still clips in, but it doesn't, it's not yeah. tight, is yeah. it? Yeah, so if, if you do break off, the leg clip pulls away from the swivel yeah. and the fish isn't tethered to the rig. So it's a semi-fixed rig. I've got a little snap link swivel there to attach my hook length. For speed, obviously. Yeah. yeah. And then we move on to the business end. I've got a little uh, PVA bag made up of like eight mil pellets. Right, now is that is that to combat the fact that um, um, Adam's fishing a feeder and obviously putting a little bit of free bait out every time. Obviously you don't want to chuck a, a single up bait out. You, you sort of you know, yeah, counteract well, I'm cast into to a spot now where I just can't lose feed. Yeah. So I'm, rather than, it's not the right time of year for a single hook bait. So rather than just chucking a straight lead and a pellet, just putting a little pile of attraction with the eight mils. Right. It's only a small bag as well, isn't it? Yeah, a little small bag, probably 15, eight mil pellets in there. I'm just pulling the hook length through it then I've got a little size, uh, size 12 QM1. Nice. Little eight mil hard pellet. And you've gone down on the size of the hook bait as well? Yeah, the, we're not getting the size of, there's some big fish in this lake, but the si average size of fish is probably only four and a half. Right. 
and they haven't got massive mouths, so I've just gone down in a nice small little bait so they can just suck it in that little bit easier. Nice one. And I suppose the PVA bag as well, obviously not using tubing or anything like that, helps with anti-tangle purposes. Yeah, it does. The other thing I'm doing is making sure I feather it. That's it, So yeah. it keeps the two items set. So I'm getting two separate splashes. Yeah. So as I feather it, they're getting the bomb and then the PVA bag, so everything's lying nice and straight. Yeah, if you look closer, you can actually see that. I mean, yeah. you're chucking probably, what, 40 yards here to yeah. the island because you're obviously sitting in a little bit of a bay, yeah. but you can definitely see the lead and the bag plopping in. Yeah, just make sure the rig's not tangled and, like I said, the PVO bag does a large part of that for me. Nice one. Right, well, I'll tell you what, I don't want to take up too much of your time because we're well over halfway. Get it back out there and have a go. We're into the last hour and it really has been a match of two halves. Adam got off to a flyer, but Steve, just like the champion we know he is, is absolutely bagging up. Who's going to take the honours? I don't know, but it's definitely going to be close. So, Ad, the X-Safe pellet feeder is a weird-looking thing in truth, isn't it? Uh, talk it is. me through the mechanics, because I very rarely see people fishing it, but it's so effective. Yeah, it is, yeah. Basically, it's like a little scoop feeder with a short hook length. Right. Uh, and this one, obviously, being an X-Safe system, you have a tail rubber over the top and just a small loop on your line to attach right. it, and then, basically, the tail rubber comes back over and keeps everything in play. Right. So, basically, while, while you're fishing, the elastic softens the blow of the fish, yep. um, and, obviously, you lose less fish. Right. But the nice thing about this system is basically it's safe, where a lot of elasticated feeders aren't safe, because if your line breaks, yeah. the fish has got to tether that around until it can get rid of it. And obviously with the elastic, it's a lot harder to do that. Yeah. So basically this system here, with the tail rubber on, if your line breaks behind, as there, you just pull, and the elastic will pull through, and the feeder will drop off the back. Right, and that's so, something that here at Chestnut Pools, they stipulate that, you know, in truth, Every feeder's got to do that, and, and not yeah, everyone. Yeah, well, basically, yeah, they prefer inline feeders because obviously they're always going to drop off the bat, but he's quite happy with the safe system here. Obviously, yeah. that feeder's going to fall I mean, off, and that that's fish nothing, is going to get it? rid that's of That's nothing, and, yeah. and barbless hooks as well, they get yeah, rid of that. Hooks, yeah, barbless hooks, I mean, they get rid of it mid-fight sometimes, so yeah, <laughs> let's, do, yeah. let's face it. So, yeah, it's a nice little safe system, dead easy to use, easy to attach and take off. Right. And so, and you're away, mate, yeah. Talk us around to set it up, then. Dead simple, six-pound drag line. I've got it doubled up in the last section there, just right. uh, for when it rubs over your net, just for a bit of extra strength, nice, and also it keeps crafty. the line nice and still on the bottom. Obviously, the double the thickness, the heavier it is, yep, it's nice good. and tight. And I've got down to an 019 hook length, right. uh, which is N gauge line, which is a seven pound breaking strength. Right, seven pound in old money, nice That's one. That's it. And then we've got a QM1 hook, and then we've got a nice little bait bayonet there, so it's just nice and simple to hook oh, your bait on. quick. So it's nice, just ties on like a normal hair, just press your bait in. And he's away like nice one. So show nice us how easy it is to load up. It, easy to load. Basically, all you do, scoot your pellets in. Right. Until you've got a base. Yep. Just flatten it in. Get your hook bait. Fold it over. Literally, just give it a little press so it stays in position. And then just a little bit over the top for the right, cast. So you almost like double skin it a little bit. Yeah, basically. And that will yeah. go anywhere. You could, you could cast that on a little silt weed and a little debris and stuff and like that. That's the idea. It's all everything's compact in. As soon as the uh, the water starts pushing. The, uh, creating the pressure around the feeder, this will all come out and your hook bait will just sit dead in front of the feeder so you're ready for action. Perfect, right. Well, Steve's making a bit of a run on you with the next fif last 15 yeah. minutes to go, so uh, get it in, mate. Cheers, Good mate. Back. Thank you. Hello and welcome to a brand new series of Fishing Gurus. Welcome to Fishing Gurus, right mate. You, it's mate. an absolute pleasure having you on. May the best method, may the best man win. Go on, son, in you go. Well, it's been an absolute masterclass today by this young man. Great <laughs> fight, yeah. great bite. You made a few little rig changes and it made all the difference. Exactly. Look at that, just sitting there in the flow. What a beautiful sight. 